Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to go over some of the comments, the questions more so that y'all are leaving that would require a long drawn out response and it would be easier for me to just be able to respond by video. And during the weekends I have a lot of free time because I'm spending it with the family here and I can just take about a good 10 to 15 minutes to answer as many questions as possible. The goal is at least five, if we can make that. It depends on the response itself, but uh, some of these questions are good ones, and we're gonna try to keep it clean, positive, and fun, so I hope you're gonna enjoy this. Let's get started with the first one. All right, uh, one hour ago, Tiberius Wade says, Mark, what's your Hero 9 mic battery pack setup? have a couple of heroes, the five, six, seven, eight, one each. Best one is a hero three and eight. Been looking at the nine, just not keen on a few issues. Yes, uh, Tiberius. I also have a lot of issues with it, um, but to answer the question, the setup that I'm using for the hero nine, I've got the little media mod adapter right there. And in order to get that off, you just basically unlock that. It swings open that door and then you pull it sideways, but check that out. You cannot move that off because of the mount adapter for the tripod. So you have to basically untether the GoPro. You have to unscrew your little bolt right there or the screw that locks it on. Take that off, then you can remove the media mod and then you can change a battery. This is one of the problems, I'm sorry if I didn't explain myself. Um, one of the issues that I have is that it takes forever to access that battery right there to swap it out. And on average, I'm going through at least three or four swaps on this battery itself. But in order to use the mic that we have, you have to purchase this little media mod adapter i want to say it's anywhere from 60 to 80 dollars depending on where you buy it and the reason why you need it is because of this little adapter right there in order to plug the mic in it's got to go into that there's no other adapter that i've seen so far and that allows us to plug in our rode lav mic plus it was designed to be used with an iphone and uh, in order to use it with a GoPro, you have to purchase a separate adapter right there. That right, it, I think it's like the Rode SC3 or the SC4. And that allows you to connect the TRRS that the Lab Mic Pluck has um, to a, it converts it from that TRRS to a TRS, which the GoPro will be able to read. And then the actual mic itself comes with a little windscreen right there to block out all that wind. It's gonna give you some great crisp audio. And this thing, uh, it, it's such a nuisance. And the main reason why is because it takes a little bit of time to aim the GoPro just right so that the field of view is not capturing the bill on the uh, action hat itself and I have to go through that over and over again. Whereas the old setup that we used was the Hero 6. It mounts inside a frame, and all you gotta do is just slide that in. When you need to do a battery swap, you take it out. You're not messing with the angle of the frame, so you got that perfect field of view every time. It, lay, it takes less than a minute of time to get it swapped out, and it's, it's awesome. But the reason why I'm sticking with the Hero 9 versus my 6 is because this, the stabilization on this guy, it's so spectacular. And when I'm looking around, it's not going to get you dizzy. So that's why I'm choosing to stay with it. It's got good low light and the picture that it has is stunning in comparison to the 6. Uh, the things that I hate about it is that it overheats super easy and it's corrupted footage from two trips already where that's my livelihood. If I don't produce videos, then I don't get to earn money. And on two days of work that I have done, GoPro has failed me and corrupted the footage on the SD card. I've tried several machines to get to or to try to get the card to be read on and it just won't do it. So you gotta reformat it and then you'll lose out on a day's wage, which is really a bummer. So that's the mic that I'm using, the Rode Lab Mic Plus. 
and the battery pack setup it's just the regular gopro these uh, batteries tend to last probably 15 minutes longer than the original gopro batteries they cost the same amount um, i might venture off to like a battery pack to where i can have all day filming and figure out some kind of way to mount all of that while it's on my head, the battery pack to my life jacket some way with the cord that goes back there because I have tested it out. I left the GoPro running overnight on a five minute loop mode and it never overheated once. So that lets me know that in a controlled environment, 73 degrees inside the house, it's good and it will perform. I just don't know if that's going to work out there in the elements whenever we're dealing with like 90 degree temperature days, no wind, and that GoPro is subjected to some very high heat. And the fact that they don't make a white bodied Hero 9 or a white bodied uh, Media Mod, um, yeah, it, it's, it just absorbs that heat and it bakes the GoPro to the point where you can barely even touch the batteries. They're so hot because of continuous filming. So we'll see if the external adapter is gonna remedy that for us. All right, so question number one, that is what we've got. Let's continue looking down the list. And uh, here we go, Harold Sanchez, four hours ago. Hey brother, just chilling with my six week old grandson. Congratulations, Harold. Um, I also am a, a new grandfather. My uh, little baby boy, he is uh, a year old and they just got through visiting us. It was a spectacular time. I know the feeling, so congrats to you. Um, we're watching your videos. I have to ask, I want to get into kayak fishing. What kind of kayak brand are you using or does it matter? I'm learning a lot from your videos and I want to thank you for sharing. Keep up the good work. I'm flattered, Harold. Thank you so much for the kind words. And it's always a flattering feeling whenever the content that I'm producing can be uh, viewed as educational in some you know, form or fashion. So I really appreciate those kind words. Yes, to me, the brand does matter. You're gonna pay for what you get. And the two particular brands that I'm gonna talk about are Hobie and Old Town. Uh, they're, they're up there on the list. Um, they have done their work. They've basically, they're at the top because of the products that they deliver to market and they're not considered toys by any means. And I would never suggest someone to go to Walmart or, uh, the likes of a store like that and purchase something that would be considered a toy. It's just going to get you injured or maybe one of your loved ones. If you purchase a kayak filler, like your son, daughter, uh, someone who you care a lot about, and without knowing, you're putting them in a death trap, something that wasn't designed to be fished out of, or its, its performance is that poor that I, I honestly would not consider it a fishing kayak. So we won't talk about kayaks that are about $400 or less, and for some of y'all out there, you may know which brands I'm talking about, things that you can find at Academy. Yeah, steer clear of those. That, and again, is subjective to my thoughts. So for all the freaking peanut gallery that's out there in the background saying, hey, wait a minute, I'm about to light this dude up on the keyboards, you know, tread easy, buddy. Uh, I'm not trying to ruffle your feathers. I'm simply giving you my point of view. This is subjective to my thoughts. So now that we've laid the groundwork out for that, I would recommend as far as a beginner kayak, the Salty PDL. It's what I'm currently using. My son is brand new to kayak fishing and he's always went with me, but now he's taken an active interest. He started his YouTube channel and that Salty PDL is the perfect, I think, beginner kayak. There's also another one, the uh, Topwater 120 PDL, another phenomenal kayak. The difference between those two is the speed and stability. You're gonna get more stability with the Topwater versus speed with the Salty. I can stand on both of them. My son can stand on both of them. He's uh, over six foot tall and over 200 uh, pounds. So if he can do it, I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all that are out there in similar size and weight can possibly do it as well. Once you get your sea legs beneath you and you gain confidence with your platform of choice, you're gonna be able to make it happen. And those two kayaks have everything that a beginner kayaker 
could want because um, once you find out what you need, Old Town has already thought of it and all you have to do is plug and play those devices. They've got gear tracks on them, they're uh, fish finder ready, and it's just a great platform all the way around. So that's what I'm gonna recommend. Now, the Salty comes in at $18.99. That's a very steep price, but again, it's not a toy. This is designed to be fished, and you don't have to do much tinkering around with it. You already being a beginner, you're not gonna to wanna to start adding holes into your kayak that you just purchased so it's a plug and play type kayak on the hobie side it, you've got like the hobie passport and then the uh the compass those are two that i would say are great beginner kayaks that uh, are, are budget in nature and i tend to lean more towards the old town side because their holes are a lot stronger they're built like tanks i've had hobies before in the past for 10 years i was a hobie boy until i just got tired of the scupper holes even though that hobie reinforced uh, the outback i've had two outbacks that cracked and i had to do the warranty process it's not fun you got to wait for your hole to come in and then you got to um, just it's just a mess and with Old Town I don't have to deal with that the the hull itself is built like a tank I don't baby the kayaks around especially the ones that Old Town has delivered to the channel for free for being able to show you all so the work that I do um, it's basically a wash Old Town sends me a kayak I get a kayak to produce content on I don't baby them and I don't hold any punches or anything like that so I'm not sponsored by Old Town by any way shape or form so I'm not earning money by letting y'all know what I think about either kayak brand and I'm at liberty to speak my mind Old Town has just got a better hull. Hobie does have a very efficient drive with the Mirage Drive However, it's weak. Uh, it, it's constantly breaking down. It squeaks a lot once you're in the marsh and you get some of that mud in it. The little kick up fin, little peg, that it wears out too easy and then eventually your fins are constantly broke. For those of you that are Mirage Drive owners, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you may be too prideful to comment inside the section down below saying, yeah, you're right. It's always happened to me. So. If you use it enough, it's gonna eventually go there and you find yourself constantly having to tie down or tighten down those little screws that are made from plastic. Um, so yeah, the PDL drive on the other hand, yes, you need about 10 to 12 inches of water in order to leave it deployed, but it is built like a tank. I'm telling you what, that drive will take a beating. I mean, I have shucked hundreds of oysters and it's uh, it's a very, very strong drive. I think it has one of the better warranties out there on the market versus every other manufacturer's drive system. And the only reason why Old Town is able to do that is because they believe in their product. And uh, I've seen their like development side research, uh, like what, what is it called, R&D and their QA side, the quality assurance. Um, those guys are on it. They believe in their product. They're able to give a like a better warranty than everybody else because their product is just that good. So that's what I'm gonna recommend. The Salty PDL, the Topwater 120 PDL, perfect drives, great stability, great plastic. It's just a great platform all the way around. I won't comment on the others that are out there because I have zero experience with them. All right, that one took forever. Let's see how many more we can answer before we hit our 10, 15 minute mark. Here we go. Here we go. David, 22 hours ago, how deep is the water under the bridge? That's uh, in reference to the Galveston Causeway holding monsters video again. Uh, the reason why I didn't answer your question, David, is just because the bridge is very long and depending on where you're at under there, it could be a different depth. Uh, let's just take, for instance, the channel side where the intercoastal goes through. That's probably 17 plus feet, depending on the tide. And as you get closer towards the bank, the average depth from the channel to the bank is approximately seven feet. And as you get towards the pylons, the, 
when the current's ripping through there, it forms those eddies. It kind of carves out a little deep pool at the edge of those pylons. So it's probably going to be a little bit deeper right there. Uh, best bet is to purchase like a depth finder and then do your homework by spending a lot of time out there on the water. But uh, for the most part, it's very shallow, um, not too deep at all. The killer of it all is even though it's not too deep, the currents that rip through there are very dangerous. So if it's seven feet, you're not going to be able to touch the ground. The currents will sweep you away. Um, not too sure why you're curious about the depth, but I'm just trying to give you an overall, like, well-rounded answer. Yeah, there's really no other questions that I'm seeing. They're just all comments, and I, I really thank each and every one of y'all for leaving the comments down there. Uh, it helps to fuel me to go out there and want to make the next video. And um, I just I do my best to try to respond to all of them. And uh, we'll just continue monitoring the comments for legit questions that I can answer here with each and every one of y'all. But I think that's probably going to do it. I've went all the way back and uh, we're going way, way back and I'm not really seeing anything else out there. So if I didn't get to your question or I somehow passed it, um, just continue leaving them. Uh, I'm going to start trying to do this Q&A on Sundays. And uh, yeah, we're going to try to answer everything that you all have to ask and just have a good time while we're doing it. I really appreciate y'all the support that you have shown to myself, to my family. It's uh, nothing short of amazing. I truly appreciate y'all. I never take my audience for granted and I just want to constantly produce good quality content for y'all to watch with your family. And yeah, I just thank you so much for being great supporters of the channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. If you're interested in the gear that we're using on the channel, uh, go down into my video description. There's also some links that will take you to some of the, see, uh, the supporters, the sponsors that help me out to continue doing this on a consistent basis. Uh, there's discount codes and things of that nature. And yes, that will do it for our very first ever Sunday Q&A. I look forward to seeing y'all again next Sunday. And uh, I will catch y'all next time when we're off the water.